Our next speakers, and I'm going to introduce uh, both of them, Dr. Jeffrey Schiff, Medical Director for Minnesota Healthcare Programs at the Minnesota Department of Human Services, and Vineet Singhal, co-founder co -founder and CEO of Care Message, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that connects healthcare organizations with mobile technologies to improve health, uh, health literacy and self-health management. And we're excited to have both of them with us today to share how Minnesota Medicaid is using mobile technology to improve quality measurement through an innovative partnership with Care Message and to also learn more about how Care Message is improving health outcomes in the safety net population through some other partnerships. So first, I'll turn it over to Dr. Schiff. Thank you, Catherine. And uh, it's a pleasure to join everyone on this call today. I, I put on a stagecoach and a train on here because when the stagecoach took three months to get across America and the train took three days, it was pretty revolutionary. And we're hoping that using uh, mobile technology for patient reported outcomes has the same sort of impact where we can greatly enhance and make it much more productive to measure patient reported outcomes in a meaningful way. I want to um, tell you that uh, I appreciated um, the, the um, key points from Dr. Berwick, and I think that this is, has the capacity to change the balance of power um, in, um, our, um, in our system if we can actually move to a, a truly uh, patient truly timely patient reported outcomes. Um, I work clinically in the emergency department and the technology that we all talk about, the mobile technology, I joke around that since smartphones have come into existence, our patients don't complain about waiting because they have something to do. So the smartphone is really very much a part of the culture and, and um, as I'm sure Vineet will talk about, is, uh, is a big part of the culture for Medicaid recipients. I want to spend a few minutes talking about um, measurement and how we at Medicaid see measurement and then get into the specifics of what we are working to accomplish in our uh, partnership with uh, Care Message. First of all, um, I just want to point out that uh, we measure for a variety of reasons, and the reason that most people think about is measuring for accountability, and that's often measuring in our world at the state level to compare ourselves to other states or geographic regions within states. We measure health plans to see how they perform. We measure um, provider-based models of care, um, such as uh, patient-centered medical homes or ACOs, to see how they compare. And we uh, measure um, integrated models of care now more and more. We also measure, though I just want to say that that's what everyone thinks about most, but we also measure for quality improvement. And here in Minnesota, we've um, taken up some measures that we actually are a little bit homegrown around the amount of uh, big issue for us is the amount of opiate being prescribed. And we measure those at the provider level, or we ask providers to measure for the purposes of quality improvement in their own systems of care so that they then can, um, can understand what they're doing. And sometimes at our level, having a, as I'll talk about, having a provider organization measure for quality improvement is in some ways an infrastructure for us at a level, at the state level. We also measure to address and understand disparities. And one of the key issues that a lot of Medicaid programs are working on is to understand the disparities and then to you know, focus programs on addressing them. And those disparities really relate to thinking of Medicaid not as a homogeneous population, but as a group of populations that have various social risks as well as medical risks. And then we measure, um, um, we measure for um, uh, um, to affect policy to uh, go to our legislatures and our other constituencies to um, identify issues that we need to address. Measures appear on what I what I think most people consider a validity continuum, that you can have an infrastructure measure such as the existence of a medical home, a process measure such as having a care plan inside that medical home, and a health care outcome such as improved um, diabetes outcomes um, as well. Those are all important, but as was just in the New England Journal, and I could probably any week pick up New England Journal or JAMA or the New York Times even and see quotes about the problem with the measurement infrastructure in the healthcare system. 
this from Porter, Larson, and Lee, uh, process measures that don't truly differentiate among providers, so incentives for improvement are limited. Yet efforts required to measure processes and ensure compliance consumes organizations, resources, and attention. And certainly, um, the National Academy of Medicine, formerly called the National, I mean, the, the um, Institute of Medicine, um, came out with this pretty groundbreaking vital signs report just less than a year ago that really calls into question the amount of process and infrastructure measures and really calls for us to move to measures of outcome in, in major areas. So that is um, all across the board and virtually every week I'm sure many of you see um, articles that call, call on this issue. I wanted to propose uh, something a little bit different here um, as we talk about this and to think about extending this validity continuum. I call the beginning of this continuum deep infrastructure. And when we started talking about the healthcare home, I used to talk about, or the medical home as it's more commonly known, I used to talk about um, the healthcare home as being like a Rembrandt painting and saying that you have 7% yellow in the painting will tell you nothing about whether the painting is beautiful or not. The same thing is really true here where we need to look at deeper infrastructure, not whether or not you have certain criteria, but may, whether the criteria is actually meeting the family needs. We recently um, um, worked with uh, Seattle Children's and Rita Mangione-Smith on developing um, a deep infrastructure measure called the Family um, Experience with Care Coordination, but those are a lot of ways patient reported or, or family reported experiences of care. And then on the other end of the continuum are measures of well-being. And those are things like the PROMISE measures um, that developed by NIH, the CDC Healthy Days, the World Health Organization, SF12, that really talk about how people are doing in, their, in and around their communities. So this validity continuum needs to be extended, and I think patient, the mobile technology gives us the opportunity to do that. The other thing I just want to talk about just mentioned briefly because this is what always snags us in the is that claims-based measures are relatively easy to get at. We at Medicaid and most health plans all get their claims in and, and can see what comes through claims, but claims-based measures are often not everything we want. Hybrid measures look at uh, medical records and claims, so a diabetes measure can tell you whether someone achieved a a lower um, hemoglobin A1C and what the denominator of diabetes pa patients are and are some combination. And as EHRs come more online um, uh, and meaningful use becomes more prominent, there's certainly an opportunity to use those. And then we have patient-reported measures, which I we've talked about, patient-reported experience of care and then patient-reported outcome measures. And those include measures of well-being and measures of, uh, of functional status. And that's where the opportunity we're talking about today is. I think there are a couple important points to make about these measures. The first is that all of these are interrelated, but the same measure is not necessarily the correct measure for accountability at every level. Minnesota has piloted using the PHQ-9 as a depression survey, but the measure for depression remission, remission is really around folk, the number of folks who actually achieve depression remission. Um, not actually an aggregated number uh, number for just the PHQ-9. Similarly, as I said earlier, collection and use of measures for quality improvement may be sufficient uh, or part of a measure of infrastructure at a different level of accountability. So one thing we've looked at in Minnesota um, is the number of new chronic users of opioids to try to address the risks of prescribed opioids moving to addiction. That may be an accountability measure at the level of the clinic where, or the level of a health system where underneath that we'll ask or we'll expect that providers, providers will look at things like whether or not they screened for substance use before they did the second prescription, whether they created a pain plan, and a lot of other things that will, that will in a sense, lead to a better aggregated measure. Patient-reported outcomes... Um, are um, one component, as we talked about. There's a, this is just a definition of a patient-reported outcome in the middle that talks about, um, about um, 
about really the data coming in without an amendment or interpretation. And I think the next part is really important is that patient reported outcomes have the opportunity, which is really the unique thing about our partnership, to create a feedback loop to um, uh, providers um, so that they can actually act on them to, to work with their patients. Um, patient reported outcomes that we see um, can, um, um, again, our perception of their patients, um, are their, of, their, of the patient's care and not, a, not of their health care experience, I mean of their outcomes and not of their health care experience. I, um, talk, I talk jokingly about patient reported experience of care when I, because when I go to the um, car dealership, I find that the folks ask me to rate them a 10 um, as they do their patient experience survey. And I'm acutely aware that if we create a measure with too much accountability or too much reward based on it, we have the ability to change people's perceptions and how they go about either collecting it or how they incentivize people to fill it out. So again, the experience and the patient reported outcome have to match um, and be accountable at the right level. We look at patient reported outcomes as useful for patient management if the collection is efficient, if the feedback can be prompt, if the tool is useful for that patient population. We also look at um, them as useful for quality improvement if they're aggregated and put into a clinic process and if there is a clinic level quality improvement process that they can impact. And they're useful at the state MCO and uh, accountable care organization level if they're identify a key infrastructure component and are linked to relevant sentinel measures. Our project with, um, with Care Message is really, I would say, the start down that road um, because it's not very common that Medicaid programs actually go after patient reported outcomes at all and then actually go after them in a way in which they're collected in an efficient way. Our goal with this project is really to test the ability of provider systems to use text message, the text message based platform to collect the patient reported outcome and then to use that patient reported outcome back into the system for patient management. We actually are very thankful for the, um, the grant that we received through the RX Foundation um, to do this work. And we are hoping then that we will, at the state level, just get the aggregated results without an accountability level to test the state program and to see whether or not this proof of concept works. Our, um, the, our role, our goal is, to tr is a transformation um, to change the current collection from a, from a very slow, antiquated method that's highly administrative and very costly to an, innovative, um, to an innovative method. We want to see whether or not we are able to collect PROs in this population and how efficiently. And we want um, to know whether collecting the PROs um, provides meaningful um, results. We, have, um, um, we, haven't we haven't decided a tool. We hope to use an open source tool in this process because we feel like we'll be able to get feedback faster. Our partners, as I've said, are the care message folks who, are, who have the technology and the platform, our clinical providers, our purchasers and payers, and then a PRO tool with, um, with a measure steward. There are some challenges in this work, as we'll talk about, I'm sure, and some of the questions that already came in re, um, relate to one challenge is around consent um, for, use of, uh, for use of texting. Another is around delivery pulse, how and when do we send how, how much out to our recipients. A challenge of incentives for recipients to or whether or not we should use incentives to get folks to uh, participate. And then the challenge that we talked about around clinical workflows. So with that, um, this is a little bit of just uh, a little bit of the, the uh, process we're using um, for recruiting and for identifying folks. And I'm going to turn it over now um, to Vineet, who's going to talk more about the, the mobile technology and the process and Care Message as our partner. Thank you.